Hello Jay, today I'm going to show you how to replace your 12 volt high power connector which you have uh, catastrophically failed in your earlier video that you posted today which is not the end of the world it's just the beginning of the end of the world so we're gonna I'm gonna go straight to it I'm gonna put some standoffs here so that the board is standing up above the table so I don't have to hold it with any kind of jig or any kind of preheating station or none of that you do not really need a preheating station for replacing a connector what you need is patience something that not all of the repair techs like me have some have so little patience that they would crank up 500 degrees on their hot air station and uh, speed up the process and as a result they speed up the damage as well so we're gonna do it right we're gonna do it slow and we're gonna do it good so obviously we want to evacuate the fumes of our solder so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a big tip soldering iron like any soldering iron iron will work as long as the tip is big enough uh, we're talking you know two three millimeters tip at the very end of the tip okay then you're gonna want if you have low melt solder that will make it easier to remove uh, the uh, old socket as well as clear clearing all of its holes then you're gonna want some leaded solder and the leaded solder will make it easier to solder it back on and so because it has a lower temperature lower melting uh, temperature than uh, regular factory lead free uh, which is also the root cause of all uh, electronics related problems in the recent human history so we don't need a lot of uh, low melt As a matter of fact we can do it without the low melt but we're gonna do it with the low melt because you have it and probably the cheapest flux that you can find on the internet is this garbage here that you buy a dollar a gallon it's a fake king bow from China it works absolute magic so we're gonna be using that and we're gonna start with just hot air we don't need anything I got 400 degrees on the dial and I'm not focusing in any particular area at any given moment until the time is right and I'm just moving around I'm preheating this general area and you got to keep in mind that your connector can melt that's why you don't but it will not melt at you know 400 degrees or whatever it will definitely melt at 500 so and also we have an LED here let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better we have an LED here that's a power indicator and we do not want to be uh, damaging that either so we're trying to what we're trying to do here is basically we're trying to heat up the uh, general area where we're working before we start focusing the heat onto the uh, pins and uh, another thing you want to get is uh, a wick so some kind of a wick like this uh, this is a mechanic wick not you don't need an expensive wick and the wick is needed to wick out or basically remove solder from the holes so that it is ready to accept a new connector in in our example we're not going to be accepting a new connector but I will just remove this connector and I will solder it back in uh, originally I was going to solder it on a different board but what's the point so we're gonna slowly continue on preheating this thing uh, and this is all done in real time I'm not cutting anything out so that you can actually 
time me how long it'll take so we add a little bit of flux we don't need to saturate anything we don't want it to go where we don't want it to go so just enough for it to stay where it is I'm gonna go ahead and activate the extraction so I don't breathe all of that Chinese cancer and uh, I will uh, by this time the board in this general area is probably about 150 200 degrees max I, I, not even that probably so I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab some of that low melt solder here as you can see and just start smearing it all over and uh, have the uh, hot air nozzle just color, kind of follow the nozzle and you see how it likes to stick to the board yeah that's because there's no uh, flux there so we're gonna add some flux here there it's doing a little better now just kind of go over we don't need to be super aggressive we're still moving around and um, take your soldering iron position it, position it onto on top of any given pin and just kind of gently move it around once you start feeling that it actually moves around you might not want to feel that on this particular pin but if you take like a sense pin you will see that it's already loose and uh, what, what you're doing is you're moving the pin around I'm gonna keep adding a little bit of flux you're moving the pin around allowing the low melt to sip between the pin through the hole so same thing for all of the other pins see that way I'm not even touching the board all I'm doing is I'm working on the pins and uh, see BAM the connector just fell through right there so while everything is still hot um, I don't have a cameraman here to assist like you do so I'm gonna have to cut myself a piece of wick and uh, actually no well yes I, I already have a piece of wick ready to go but I'm gonna add some more some more low melt uh, and I'm gonna go over these holes So that way I push even more of that stuff into them, right? Like so. See? Right there. So I'm going to clean up the tip. Wipe it off of uh, the shirt of your uh, cameraman. Uh, and uh, we're going to bring in that piece of wick. And as we blow on it, we're wicking it at the same time. So we're going to be a little bit careful here. This is tricky because I'm doing this with just two hands it would really help if I had a, a helper here of some sort but I don't so that's it this wick is done we're gonna cut ourselves one more piece while trying to keep that board still hot there's another another piece of wick that doesn't want to stick if your wick is dry and not saturated with any kind of rosin or resin or whatever you can just add flux and it'll be good so continue on wicking wicking here wicking there this is gonna smoke so if it doesn't smoke, you're probably not doing it right. All right, so normally when I do this, I would bring in a really tiny micro tip like this so that I can go into each hole and push the low melt even further. But in this case, I cannot do it. So I'm just going to flip the board. And as you can see here, we still have a little bit of um, solder sticking through these holes so I'm going to cut another piece of the wick so I can remove it from this end of the board as well
and uh, sometimes you might end up having this one stubborn pin that just refuses to wick so just add more solder to it and repeat the process like this uh, sense pin here a couple of sense pins that were refusing to get wicked I just put a little bit more solder in them and uh, repeat and uh, I think I think this went through I don't know it probably poke through and see if it yeah so my little tool here lets me verify that the hole is actually through oh yeah I think this is good uh, we don't need any flux on this end of the board so let's just go ahead and wipe this out like this and uh, since we're just doing this for the um, for the show I'm just gonna reuse the old connector put it back in hopefully it fits yep the connector just fit right in so I'm gonna go on the back just kind of press it down a little bit with my finger and uh, apply flux and now we're not gonna be using low melt obviously but we're gonna use the let it solder here so let's go and grab a little bit of that and do the ground pins first because they are the ones that refuse to solder the most like this and now I'm gonna start heating things up again and we're going to finish off the rest of the pins we can start with the sense pins just gonna throw a blob of solder on these pins you know don't be shy like this and when it looks when it looks like it's done let me zoom in so that you don't be uh, deceived so it looks like when it's done when in reality the solder had not flown all the way through the connector and our goal is to have solder flow all the way through so we're going to continue on adding more air and we're just going to move these pins one by one and what that will do exact same thing as it did before where it allowed low melt to sip through in this case it will allow the leaded solder to sip through and the ground pads maybe a little bit more flux just to help the ground pads that should probably be enough there this looks messy and it should be so let's remove all that stuff as you can see here it's starting to look good not the best job in the world but it looks it looks decent if you can get that done then that's all you need to wipe some more see and we didn't even damage the connector and uh, that's the same connector so we had to remove the connector at a higher temperatures because it was originally soldered with uh, lead free solder and we didn't damage it and we were able to successfully resolder it back as you can see here without any damage there nothing's melted and if we flip the board over you can see that all of that solder had flown through and that's basically how you do it I don't know how much time it took probably about 10-15 minutes hopefully you had enough uh, patience to watch the entire video and uh, hopefully this was helpful so go ahead and try again you don't need to send anything to Alex just do it yourself goodbye